to a very special episode of That Arrow Show. Today, we are about to do our full review of season four. So let's get right into it. First up, the heroes. Let's start with our main heroes, uh, Team Arrow. Oliver, this entire season was about character progression, and we can pretty much clearly see where that's going for season five. Um, he's a man who needed hope, and he needs to bring hope to Star City, so I think this season did an okay job with, with bringing that character progression. I can't disagree with you more, man. Oliver was a failed acne kid. He kept running to a brick wall, hoping that the brick wall would break. And that brick wall was Damien Dark. I'm sorry, it was a fail across the board, baby. And my boy Dibble crying in his Judge Dread outfit. I'm, they need to do something about that outfit. They will. They will, man. They will. That's a long time coming. I'll be honest with you with everybody on that team with the next feelings. Um, between Oliver and Felicity, Dibble crying over his brother, fuck around gang on full tilt. You know, and they going on Scooby Doo Adventures trying to bring back home to real life. Yeah, <laughs> it, it just got fucking stupid. When, <laughs> when Sarah was tied up in the damn basement, I just thought Oliver. If we're if we're just talking about Oliver as in general, I just thought he was he was stupid. And you still don't know how to keep the the secret that you got a baby from the woman you about to marry. And you had time travel to help you. Let's talk about the Hawks because really this is what brought down the first half of the season for me was the fact that they brought in Hawk Girl and Hawk Man to pretty much set up Legends of Tomorrow, a show that we don't really care too much about. And Victim was okay, but I felt like it was very forced to put her on that show. And then it doesn't even really matter because the big thing that they're going to put in the DC in this universe in Legends of Tomorrow isn't even that Vixen. So we got introduced to a Vixen on a show, hoping we get more of her, but instead on the spinoff show, we're going to see her grandmother. How about the fact that Argus needs to have a hiring fair because they only have five pizza, five five people and a pizza man who work there because every time there's only three people with her army that shows up. And you know what? I'm glad you brought up Argus because we can segue to Amanda Wallace who they, you fucked her over. Like, all right, we get it. Suicide Squad movie for, is a for, a, for a shitty movie. As far as the other side heroes just pop in and out, to be honest, it felt like they, they, they just wanted to come in for a cup of sugar. It was like, hi, I'm Arsenal and I'm still a thing. Hi, I'm Constantine and I used to be something. Exactly. <laughs> used to be something? <laughs> the, big, the big threat this season was magic. And you, the biggest magic user in this version of the DC Universe shows up once and you don't get no fucking use you him. You don't use him. him. All right, with the good comes the bad. You, you talking about Laurel? Not that bad. Okay. Step that back from My bad. I'm talking about villains, people. Who did Oliver and the crew have to knock up on this season? Alright guys, let me know how you feel about these villains. First up, of course, big baddie in the room, Damian Dark. You talking about Big Swole! <laughs> hey man. <laughs> just, just, just Jack for no reason. He, he get his suit tailor made to be cut. Uh, I'm telling you, Dark was the quintessential. Not if you butt Oliver. <laughs> like, I street fight for days. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> my boy Damian Dark looked like he fought for fish bones in the south. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Ironically, he showed up in the 70s on that other show. <laughs> but he, he, that motherfucker will take all covers by the <laughs> I can see Damien Dark with, with the curly mustache and everything. <laughs> but Damien Dark was honestly one of the highlights of the season. He actually kept me coming back to watch more because just to see the antics week after week and how pretty much how he pull Oliver's whole card every week. <laughs> Antics. <laughs> uh, more villains. We got an introduction to a uh, little guy called Anarchy. Oh, Anarchy. Anarchy. Game. Don't. He just, first off, he didn't give a fuck. Two shits or a damn. Okay. One of my favorite villains <laughs> because he went, he went ham, sausage, and bacon. Okay, I'm gonna stop you right there because you got a little something on your nose. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh shit. No. Well, well, actually, it was his dick. <laughs> Anarchy was a horrible bill. <laughs> shit was all about but you know get the fuck out of here with that um three three sick nunchucks <laughs> what, what, what the fuck was that <laughs> like like you could not be any more wrong anarchy did two things he beat ass and made sandwiches and won a piece of bread in the goddamn house anarchy did two things jack and shit <laughs> So there is one thing that anarchy did do mm -hmm. he did kill wifey dark wifey dark and, and, and that's why he sucks. Tag, tag me in. I, I need to assist on this one. What, if there was ever a definition for ride or die chick in the dictionary, <laughs> wifey dark would be. Now, now the motherfucker's making sense. Now you're making sense. You know what? I was going to wait to do this. Let's do this now. She riding down the street, I'm assuming it's a glaze, in a limo, Diggle pulls up. <laughs> <laughs> Not a fuck was given with any of them. She didn't scream, she didn't call for help. Mm -hmm. She oh. took that slap like a pro. And so we've had some villains pop in throughout the season, some stuck around more than others. How'd you guys feel about the calculator? You mean the uh, model for AARP? I'm talking about Mr. Steve Jobs himself. Uh, lackluster is the best way I can describe him, especially since he can't fire a damn gun. I expected a lot more from Calculator. Yeah, he was a disappointment to me and honestly forgettable. You feel like I'm leaving now? Um, God, fucking Merlin was such a fucking disappointment. Yes, I'm sorry. Yes, he just got, he, Merlin. He got relegated to henchman number three. Uh, he was just uh, with that missing arm freshman's wave. I'm like, come on, man, I need you to do better. You ran the League of Shadows, and now you're been taking, you know, take out orders for Rube and the crew. Come on, do better. Let's talk about a lot of the different relationships that went on in Arrow this season. We gotta address the elephant in the room with this first. Let's start off Oliver and Felicity. You mean, um, Elicity? I mean, best, as best we can tell it's Oliver. I mean, Alicity isn't dead per se. Uh, just when it comes to ships, it's more than just being together. It's also being that, that partnership and that team dynamic. So we also like Alicity because of the, what she brings uh, to the team, to Team Arrow. So that's why I'm definitely rooting for Alicity. In the Alicity. romantic sense, it's kind of. In the romantic sense, it's kind of up in the air. Are they going to try to pair all of them up with a new romantic interest this season? I don't think so. Uh, just from uh, people we know who's going to be introduced to the show, I don't. I don't really think so. Okay, you ask that question. Here's my question: Do you think they will try to do that with Felicity? Felicity, yes. Um, Interesting. Why do you think that? Because uh, I read Twitter. <laughs> Another relationship I wanted to hit on is the uh, the Diggle brothers. So basically, this is sort of hit and miss. For me, honestly, I love Andy's uh, contribution to the whole antagonist role of it. Mm -hmm. But the fact that, oh, but it did point out the fact that, you know, I'm sorry, but boy Diggle's a bit of a hypocrite and a bit of a crybaby. Ooh, don't say that too loud. I'm, I'm sorry, but the man falls like a cheap sheet, like cheap sheets on Sundays. And... <laughs> but in the point of Diggle being shown as a hypocrite, wasn't that to say that he can't always be and let's call it, he can't always be his magical black sage. He's more complex than just exactly. a guy who pops up and gives advice to the exactly. So let's do the, let's switch to another relationship. Let's do Lance, Mama Smoke, and Calculator. Okay. When they put Lance and, and Mama Smoke together, I thought that was fresh. For, for, for me, that was fresh. I like that show. too. Um, but the moment Calculator is introduced into that dynamic, it ruins Mama Smoke as a character. And I agree with you 100%. The whole founding principle of Mama Smoke is, I may be this ditzy persona, but I survive all the fact that even I, I have this righteous righteousness about me because I do the right thing. It, it, in, other words, in other words, it was saying that you didn't have to be smart or you didn't have to come from a, you know, higher 
more financially higher upbringing just to be a good person. Exactly. What counts is your actions. But the thing is, she, if you would have thought it was an eclipse by how much shade she was throwing. You come to find out, you know, she'd been lying the whole time. So that kind of dismisses the character. And then I think what really irks me about that mention the lying part is, like, when she finally honest with Felicity, like, they just smooth right over it. And that like, didn't like they didn't happen. happen. They needed Calculator to be the Calculator because Calculator is a villain. Next up, we're going to talk about the standout moments of this season. Let's get down to the nitty gritty, the fight choreography. It was hit and miss, mostly miss. Um, but, you know, we did have some good points, but I'm going to point out some of the shitty ones. Um, we've seen a lot of whiffed punches. Hell, if you go into the, the the trailer for the newest season, like, you could clearly see that the fight choreography is off when they're punching Oliver in the face while he's tied up in the chair. Like, you could clearly see that he did not hit him in the face. My, my thing are the B-roll people who showed up apparently the first day <laughs> and didn't know where to aim, look, or shoot. Oh, you're talking about that, or let's talk about how we kill a guy, but we're just gonna work on our computers in the background. <laughs> <laughs> we, didn't, we didn't see none of that shit. Well, my boy, Oliver and Diggle ran up into those streets. You mean into the burn? Into the cold of sex. Scaring <laughs> all the white people. Scaring the hell. We're running up in home. <laughs> we're doing dirt. And like, Oliver pulled the most fantastic move. The <laughs> that, That's when the real fight choreography came. That's when the real choreographer came through. He was like, man, y'all doing this. Like, it almost made me believe Oliver had to survive on an island. I'm sure it was and him it, or it, the one that did the party kick. <laughs> Mind you, the arrow trick only came up because Oliver didn't want to get showed up. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Diggle, Diggle outpaced him. He was way up in front. Then Oliver was like, I gotta show everybody that the show was about me. <laughs> Diggle owned up to his title, Spartan, and kicked the shit. <laughs> Out of this scroll. Like, you thought this was the dome? This is Spartan. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, Laurel, that's definitely my standout moment for the season, as many people. Uh, we wanted to know from the beginning who was in that grave, and. The right person. <laughs> most, of us, most of us were pleased with the results. Yeah, I can uh, say I was not satisfied. Well, I'm sorry. I can say that I was very satisfied. And finally, we come to the end. But first, we got to tell you guys what we're looking for coming up for the new season. But let's get good flashbacks because the flashback this season, which we didn't talk about the flashback, but um, they weren't worth mentioning. Yeah, that's <laughs> why. Really? So in this season, we know Oliver is in Russia with the Russian with the Bravo. So this is where shit hits the fan. Exactly. No, they've been too candid. Screw all that. You know what I want to see this season? I want to see somebody from the Bat family represented. Number two, who I want to see? I want to see more representation from Curtis. I see that he's being trained and everything. Get Mr. Terrific out there. And th cut down on some of the bow people. Everybody in their mom, grandma has to shoot a damn bow. Let, let me, let, Go for you're it. segwayed it. So, here you guys are introducing Prometheus into the show. Prometheus was a badass in the comics that one time when he fucked up the Justice League and then after that you ruined him, DC Comics. I will never forget you for doing that. Do not fuck this character up on this show. Prometheus is the... Prometheus is what Deathstroke wishes he was, okay? Let's get that out of the way. It's who Deathstroke jacks off to at night. Exactly. Do not fuck this up. And y'all gave him a bow. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to let that slide. Anything else you're looking forward to? Um, the resurrection of Amanda Waller. Yeah. <laughs> a Suicide Squad with an actual Suicide Squad, <laughs> not just Cupid. <laughs> All right, everybody. I guess that concludes our very special episode. Look for us this season. We will. We will try to review every episode of this season of Arrow. If they suck so hard that we don't give a damn, we might skip them. Right. 
So there are some other villains who popped in. Some of them stuck around throughout the season. How do you guys feel about Calculator? You mean seventy-year-old Archer? <laughs> who? I <laughs> hit. All right. You ready? Uh. <laughs> Y'all not ready. Coming out the JC Penney catalog. <laughs> <laughs> Like a just for me. I was about to say that. I was just about to say that. God damn it. That was going to be me. God damn it. I was going to say, you mean the just for me kind of walk? God damn it, man. Yeah. Yeah. Those girls are going to fuck you up with that one, too. How do you guys feel about Calculator? You mean the poster board for AARP? 